it's time to learn how to animate in Photoshop. Let's get straight to it. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome back to Animation in Photoshop. We're going to jump right in because this is episode two and if you haven't watched episode one yet, you should go back and do that. Uh, last time we drew this little foot slamming down into the earth and then turning towards the camera and we added some little puffs of dust behind the foot as well. We then duplicated that over here to um, do the other foot. We haven't flipped it yet. We'll just do that later. There's no point doing it now. Next shot we have here you can see is our character's little cape. It's going to whip into a different shape and then disappear. I can already tell I've got, I'll need more time than what we've got allocated here. So I'm just going to stretch out these two frames on our storyboard layer to give us a bit of time to work on that. Now I'm just going to select my green roughs layer here and I'm just going to give myself another uh, frame to be working with. So we'll just click there, click two, that's going to come along. We've got uh, our keyboard shortcuts here, the arrow keys to just go left and right. If that's not working for you, you probably need to just check this little toggle down here. Uh, let's make these ones green, might as well keep it the same colour. And we're just going to use a bit of wave principle animation to animate this cape. So what we are going to do, luckily we've already got our um, guide layer underneath. So what we're going to do is go down to our guide layer here uh, and we're just going to draw ourselves, make sure I've got on the layer there as well. You can see we have our wave which goes in this direction like so. What we want now is the peak of our waves, this bit, and the trough here, this bit, to be opposite, yeah? As if this peak here has now moved down the cape to appear here at this part of the peak. The best way to do that is just to try and draw yourself a little squiggle that is the direct opposite of the other squiggle. That make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay, so to animate a wave, it's very, very simple. You basically wanna take your wave shape here and just move it incrementally down in segments. So let's give ourselves a few frames to work with. Let's make them green as well so that it's easy to see. Um, the quickest way to do that is just to make a green frame that's empty and then just duplicate it along using the duplicate button here. Now we need to decide how long we want this to be. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames here. So we'd like that to be quite slow. We'd like the last frame here to be pretty much the first frame here. So what I might do is just delete this one Select this layer here and just hit delete, uh, duplicate, sorry. That's going to duplicate it directly after the first layer. So if we drag that to the end, it will then pop that last one on our last frame here. We now then know that uh, the middle, this is basically, this frame is basically redundant for this loop because it's just the start of the frame again. And we're just using it there for reference later on. We'll delete it in the end. We know that this is the start of our loop. Then there is one, two, and this is the middle of our loop. Then there is uh, one, two and then this is the end of our loop before it goes back to the start again so essentially this frame here is going to be bang in the middle of our loop so that bang in the middle is where we want the direct opposite wave to be okay which is quite good now these two we just want to draw equidistant between those two points now it's a bit hard to see with our uh, onion skin turned off so i'm going to turn that on and i'm just going to use uh, the onion skin settings here to just expand this to four either way, just to see if that helps. Let's select this one here now. <clears throat> and what we want this one to be is exactly halfway between, or rather slightly before halfway between, so a quarter of the way between this peak and this peak. So I find the best way to do this is just to draw the same peak again, exactly the same, grab your move tool, and then just move it a little bit. Maybe to about, there okay then you go back to your brush tool and you just finish it off either way let's go this way now we can see that our peak is here the exact middle point the peak's going to be directly underneath it okay so you can see that we've got at the moment one peak uh, let's turn off the onion skin for this uh, one peak here the next frame is moved a little bit down the next frame is going to move even more a little bit down Oh, excuse me, I've done the, the peak the wrong way there. That is entirely my fault. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> that peak should be this way. I'm a fool. Um, because then what we've got is this wave, it moves down a little bit. This one, it'll move down a little bit more. 
and then this one it will reach that peak. So here we've just got to draw it exactly halfway between this peak and this peak. So again, what we'll do is we'll take our brush, we'll draw the exact same peak as we did before in the last frame. Grab our move tool and move it down so that it's just about to hit that peak there. And we'll just start this one coming back up again. Okay, turn that off. Let's grab our loop from before and loop these first four frames. Turn off the onion skin. So you can see that that's moving a little bit. Obviously it's not a complete loop yet, it's only half of a loop. So we will finish off the complete loop now. We've got our next point there. So let's see if we can't just go straight ahead with these next segments. So we know that that one, the peak is here. So we just want that to be a little bit past the peak essentially. So this is now gonna be the peak. And we'll just, boom, boom. This next segment here, let's turn on the onion skin. Let's move the peak again just a little bit. Like so now we know we've got our final frame, which we drew earlier. So we just need to make this peak and this peak go halfway through. So let's do something like that and something like that. And then if we turn off this and loop it, we should get a fairly decent looping wave. Now that might seem a little bit confusing at first, but think of it like this. You're drawing a single wave. Okay. And then you're just taking that wave and just did, 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 moving it down a little bit. So if you want to, you could draw a wave that's twice as long and then just move it incrementally frame by frame. If you wanted a perfect loop, I find that that's a bit artificial. Um, and this creates a more of a natural loop, which is going to get Im Im important because it's not actually going to loop. It's going to do this once and then it's going to whip itself into this next shape. OK, so let's move on a little bit. Let's extend our loop here. Let's give ourselves another two frames that are green. Oh, God, I just tabbed out to GitHub there. Sorry about that. Let's come back um, and let's draw ourselves our copy of this first frame. Whip that line across there. And this is going to be the back. So it'll be shaded in a different color. So we now need to get from here to here. Now, I don't know about you, but if I turn on my onion skin, which I will just reduce back down to two for this section, um, I can see already that this little part of our previous frame is going to become very naturally this, this deep segment here. So I'm going to try and do is just morph these two lines in between each other. Let's give ourselves a blank frame in between. Okay, make that green. Now that's directly in the middle, that's directly in the middle, and then we can just follow this bit down. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm just gonna think about it. This line here is gonna have to be whipped the other way as essentially like our character's moving off screen, but you can't really see him do that, yeah? So we're gonna take this section here. This line is gonna go more upwards, so we'll just morph that, and we'll just push this in as well. Now, again, if you want to, you can turn off on your skin just quickly. Let's give ourselves a little bit of a fold and a little bit of the back here. Okay. Now what that gives us is a loop that boom, morphs into this other shape. Bam, bam. Okay. Now we're just going to go straight ahead. I've got no idea where I'm going to go with this. I'm, I want it to basically fold a bit more and then whip off the screen like that. So let's see what that looks like. First of all, let's play that. Boom, boom, nice. That looks okay. So I'm just gonna draw some frames. I may end up like stretching them, moving them, add things in the middle, but let's just see where this goes. It's gonna to start to fold. So we want that fold to become more severe. Like this, and like that bit's gonna go into the distance and that bit's gonna to start to crease over again. Maybe it's gonna to start to cause another bit to sort of fold up over there. OK, then I think I want it to settle into that a bit more. So we'll just draw one that's basically exactly the same, but just a little bit of a difference to make it settle in. And we've got down here, so let's turn on the onion skin. 
So you can see these frames get a bit settled as well. So got that section and then boom. Um, oh, I think I, I think I just accidentally did. Oh yes, I did that wrong. I'm a fool. I did that based on the storyboard below it, thinking that red was my onion skin. That was silly of me. Um, let's turn on my onion skin. There we go. And follow the green. If you're finding that distracting a little bit, what you can do is go to your storyboard and just hide it temporarily because I'm a fool and I've been doing this for ages in Photoshop. So I wouldn't be surprised if it gets you occasionally too. So we're basically doing something that's pretty much the same, but just a little bit different. And then we're going to do one that we're going to try and get as exactly close to this as possible, which is essentially a holding frame, but it is a new drawing because the cloth I want to be um, moving with a little bit of realism and cloth never stands still ever. It's never still. So um, that's going to hold there. Let's see what that looks like with the, without these dead frames. Let's just loop that little segment. Boom. Boom. And then I want it to whip off quickly. So the next frame will be quite a big jump in movement. Let's position ourselves here, add another two frames into it, make it green, and then let's have it pinch as if this has pulled it straight. So that's going to have to go bam. Someone's pulled it straight. It's kind of rippled back on itself down here a little bit. Like that. And then the next two frames are just going to be straight up. Boom. It's been pulled taut this way as it disappears off upwards. Let's add another two, make that green. Um, let's have the bottom of the cape kind of whipping up here. We can just do a little bit of shading here, like so. You might, maybe, could you see? No, you couldn't see from that angle the bottom underside of the cape there. So let's just make this one green. And let's a proper deep bit here like that so that we might be able to just get away with a little bit of shading there have the ridge there nice and then just an empty frame okay let's see what that looks like bam waving you whipped away awesome let's see that with the onion skin off All right, that looks pretty good, but let's try and add some ripples here. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I basically want to see if I can add in some little divots just to indicate where the shading is going to go later on. Basically, these are just going to be in each peak and trough of the cape, make it look a bit more like papery, folded-y. Set it because this is a very flat character, so just a little bit of an indication. Let's see what that looks like. Got our peaks and our troughs, and we're just adding a little bit of shading to those before it starts to get stretched out and pulled downwards. I think what it needs is another frame between that and that. So let's add that frame in. Let's turn on onion skin. And let's just go halfway between these two and just have a little bit of a fold. Sort of coming in up from there maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Bam. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm not sure I like the way that it, it sort of folds the wrong way into itself, but it's almost like he's going to crouch and then launch, which was the point. But then obviously he's not. He's just oh, hey, with his uh, pencil. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Bam, bam. He's whipping away with his cape then. Awesome work. Um, let's see what the next shot is quickly. I believe 
it's the hand which we'll definitely be leaving for next episode yeah let's tackle the hand next time because that was probably quite a lot to take in anyway even though it's only been a short 15 minutes or so anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this little quick tutorial um episode two in animation to photoshop make sure to like comment subscribe ring the bell all that stuff i hate saying it but youtube makes me basically a gunpoint otherwise my videos don't get any views maybe it's just because i'm shit <laughs> uh thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate it each and every one of you and i'll see you next time for another episode of tip tap i'd like to take a moment to thank my level two members of the channel thank you so much for supporting me and what i do here at tip tap a huge thank you to my first ever level two member unknown ghosts you're a legend buddy if you'd like to get a shout out at the end of each tutorial video consider hitting that join button below and becoming part of the tip tart zone thank you very much everyone i'll see you later Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.